It's rare when you can remember the first time you laid eyes on an anime. Where you were, how you stumbled onto it, your very first impression. I was at my friend's family beach house back in late August last year. I just woke up scrolling through Twitter when I saw someone retweet the first trailer for Ongaku R Sound. I was enthralled. I must have watched it eight or nine times in the first hour, and another 15 times over the course of that day. I had to look further into it. I hadn't felt this much interest in a new anime since, well, Megalobox. Except this wasn't a seasonal anime set to air in a few months where everybody would inevitably get to see it. This was an independent film that almost nobody else I know is talking about. I showed the trailer to several friends and family. I bought a digital copy of the manga, and now I'm making a whole video about it and I haven't even seen the movie yet! I want to bring this to the attention of the English-speaking audience with what little reach I have and share in my excitement for Ongaku. Ongaku R Sound is originally a manga by Hiroyuki Ohashi about a trio of high school delinquents that one day decide to form a band. Except none of them have ever played an instrument before. The leader, Kenji, doesn't even know what a bass guitar is, buying or somehow obtaining two basses instead. But this doesn't dissuade them one bit, as they just start playing and practicing. It's obviously not translated yet, so I'm not entirely spoiled to the dialogue, but I can follow the story pretty well. It's got an even mix of comedy and drama, but nothing super profound or complicated, which works great for such a short story. The manga is only 112 pages and very crudely drawn, even less detailed than Mob Psycho or One's original One Punch Man webcomic. But I love how their usually neutral expressions light up so quirky and lively. The characters carry this positive, steadfast attitude, and it's a joy to see how passionate they become playing music. It's such a charming read, and I'm even more delighted that it's getting adapted by such promising talent. Like I said earlier, Ongaku is an independent film. You won't see any well-known studio or director or even animators showing up on here, which might be why the Sakuga nerds haven't been exactly hyping this one up. The man behind it is Kenji Iwaisawa, and it's his first feature as a film director. He's done a couple animated shorts before that you can find on his YouTube channel, but Ongaku is a 71-minute film that he started in 2012 and only just finished seven years later. He didn't draw all 40,000 drawings for the film by himself. He hired a couple amateur animators to help him out here and there. But you can tell from his interviews, he's on the more ambitious side of anime directors. Nearly the whole film is rotoscoped, which is an old technique of animation that uses live action footage as a model to draw over. This can often lend to more nuanced, realistic animation, but Iwaisawa seems to go one step further and include more artsy tricks like smears and using what seems like non-digital coloring techniques. I really like how everything moves. You can tell by how the characters jitter slightly that the whole character seems to be redrawn every time, not just the mouth of the head like most other anime. The backgrounds are wonderful to look at, even when they aren't lavishly animated, which is very welcome from the manga's almost complete absence of backgrounds. And of course, it wouldn't be a good movie about music without good music, and from what I've listened to so far, I'm head over heels for it. There's audio in the interview that I've linked below from the concert scene, which is the climax of the film that he filmed as a live concert, that is definitely not what I was expecting. I think I know where they might be going with it, based on what I discerned from the manga, but I gotta watch the film first to know for sure. Of course, I understand how weird it might come off to be this excited for a film I haven't seen myself yet. I think I heard about the movie getting a showing in the United Kingdom, so I know it's been translated at least. And when I watched the second trailer with subs, I actually came close to crying, just because the dialogue was so much more wholesome and earnest than I was expecting. But no matter what, I want to support this release as officially as I can. It's a remarkable achievement that Iwaisawa managed to finish this film. His passion is inspiring, and I want to encourage that and spread it as best as I can. I highly doubt G-Kids would pick this film up for a limited release in theaters. That's even still a thing after this crisis. But the film did win the top grand prize at the Ottawa International Animation Festival this past year, so maybe it has a chance. And on the topic of this crisis, not only has it delayed several anime films, including Ongaku, but this means many movie theaters, especially independent ones that Ongaku is being shown at, 
are at risk of going out of business. I know this because the official Twitter account for Ongaku has been supporting a campaign to save the various cinemas it was meant to show at by selling merch. At least from what I can discern, I'm still not remotely fluent in Japanese. Which is why it's more important to show support than ever before. I'm obviously very much looking forward to watching Ongaku R Sound, and I hope you are too. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me in kind. Including Aochi, Beamburst, Beyond Ghibli, Cam, El Pozzarino, Flugmorph, Ginkotaku, Jackson Krellin, Jawburst, Lone Crit, My Anime Pod, Najbeb, Rikafag, Rudolph, Seaweed Ambassador, Tengun, Tippy Mango, Unique Namasaurus, Uptight Gnome, and Yellow Cheese. All of my patrons happen to have early access to all of my videos, including 20 minute sections of longer videos that I'm working on. Here's a taste of that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you again.